Here is what you missed this morning on the Catholic Morning Show. We're going to go immediately to our next guest, longtime friend of the station, longtime executive director of Pulse Life Advocates, Maggie DeWitty. Good morning, Maggie. Good morning. How are you? I am doing quite well. We were uh, we were remiss in getting you uh, on the show last week during our fall fundraiser as we highlighted those who teach, defend, and evangelize. So it, uh, it's great that we were able to connect with you here this week. And uh, I want to just say thank you. How long have you been uh, the, the executive director there at uh, Pulse Life? I have been with Pulse for 14 years. And uh, does it feel like uh, 14 years or does it f- feel like 30? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I say that because we uh, at the at Christ Our Life conference, we just talked about it, you and I, I guess, not necessarily commiserating, but, uh, you know, the, the ups and downs, the highs and lows to stay in the fight every single day as you do so courageously is a, it really is an, an act of God's grace as well as the, uh, the, the, the ability to persevere. Talk about that a little bit. Oh, you bet. Well, you know, when I first moved to to Des Moines, I worked at the diocese as the adoption coordinator for Catholic Charities, and I was there for about 10 years before I came over to Pulse, and then I've also done some other, you know, direct service work for um, foster care and a variety of other things, so as I look back, you know, I think all of the different things that I've done over the years, 25 plus years now, has really led me to be in this position that I'm in now. And it is one of those situations where you feel like you, you know, you get a little bit ahead and then something happens and then you go back and then you get ahead. And it can be exhausting, quite honestly. But I think that, uh, you know, as, as, as God tells us, we are born for such a time as this. And, and each one of us has been placed on this earth for the time that they're in for the plan that he has. And I just have to trust in that, that he has this plan for each one of us, myself included. And that involves this perseverance and this continuing on this mission, this so important mission of life and helping people understand the value and dignity of life. Well, as we talked this morning about uh, this is a Respect Life Month, and, and I saw some activity going on around uh, Respect Life uh, Week as well. You know, it, uh, you really have been in, in this, this, this work of, you know, uh, building up a, a respect for life for, for quite a while, even uh, as you stated there before your time at uh, Pulse Life Advocates. The, uh, and a lot of that is because I think you, I get the impression, and tell me if I'm wrong, that you truly believe the day that uh, that the day that, that that abortion is something that is outlawed is, is coming, right? Oh, absolutely. You know, I mean, we've seen we've seen such movement. I mean, obviously, with the reversal of Roe v. Wade, which of course was the court decision that legalized abortion in our country, being overturned two years ago via the Dobbs decision, I mean, that gave our movement and our society just a a new perspective on something that I feel had become really stagnant and people had become very apathetic on the issue and resolved that, you know, this was the law of the land and this is how our society and culture were going to operate. And to know now that we don't have federal abortion law, states are now grappling with that. You know, it's given us an opportunity to have very good conversations on this, which I think was lacking prior to this decision. Well, and I think you've uh, you, you, the way you've gone about this is you've taken a, a page out of the enemy's playbook and you've gone after the kids. Talk about the uh, the work you do uh, in schools, uh, particularly with, uh, you know, I know there's pro-life clubs and, and things that are developing in schools, but you guys have had a, a heavy influence in uh, helping make those uh, possible and really raising up what we now refer to as the pro-life generation. Oh, Absolutely. You know, it's been my contention that when we talk about the abortion issue, we have to start at the very beginning. We have to start about, you know, God made man, God made woman, and what he designed for us. And that is the root of it. And when we get into these situations that we're in right now where we have confusion about what even is a man or what is a woman, that that is the root of the evil that we're, we're combat, combating 
against and with the contraception mentality. And so I'm very passionate about natural family planning and talking about what God made our beautiful bodies to be. And when we get to that root, then we've accomplished planting that seed with our young people so that by the time they get to that teenage year, they have a firm grasp of who they are in God's image. So we have a Respect Life curriculum, K through 8, for schools. We have it in several uh, Catholic schools across the state. Of course, we'd love to have it in every school, every parish. It can be for RE, too. And it just helps to lay that foundation, that Respect Life foundation, very early on, even at kindergarten. We should be talking to our kids age appropriately about this so that they understand by the time they're a teenager what we mean when we talk about the sanctity of human life. If people want to learn uh, learn more about uh, that, that uh, curriculum, that K-8, through if it's something they don't currently have as a, a part of their education plan, how can, how can people learn more about that? Yeah, so just go to our website, pulseforlife.org, and we have under what we do, we have Respect Life curriculum. We also have a tab for specifically for Catholic churches, so if there uh, are listeners who are involved in your church and you want to find more information about how to get more life uh, resources in your parish, we have a tab that gives you resources about different things that you can do for your Respect Life Committee, um, you know, different things for the youth and uh, resources for Bible studies and all the like. So our website, Pulse for Life org has a lot of great information. Well, like uh, like us, you uh, rely on the support of your uh, your benefactors to do the great work that you do, and uh, one of the ways that you do that is through your your gala that you have uh, coming up here in just a little over a month. Uh, let's talk about that. What people can expect and how people can be a part of uh, joining you in, in the work that you do. Yes, thank you for that. Yes, so this is our largest fundraiser. So the funds that we raise really help us to do the educational efforts that we do throughout the year. So on Saturday, November 23rd at the Iowa Events Center, we will have our, um, our fundraising Christmas gala. Uh, the theme is A Child is Born. And it, we try to make it a little fun. You know, we have an auction. We have, some, uh, we have a fun new game that we're going to do this year. Uh, great dinner, Christmas music by the band Saints and Sinners. They've been so good to us the last few years in providing music. And we have a really good keynote speaker this year that I'm excited about. His name is Dr. John Brachowski, and he is a former abortionist who had a terrific conversion or reversion um, to the Catholic faith involving a trip to Medjugorje and realized that he was not doing what he should be doing and now runs the largest pro-life medical clinic in the country, Tepiac Medical Clinic in uh, Virginia. And so he's going to be joining us to tell his conversion story. So we're very excited about that. So if you can get on our website, pulseforlife.org, we have a button right on our home page where you can get tickets, uh, tables, or if you're a business and would like to sponsor, we're t- still taking sponsorships as well. Well, you, you sold the event a little short there, Maggie. I, I, as somebody who's attended this event in the past with the, uh, the, the entertainment, the, uh, the, the folks that you will see there, uh, it, it's, I don't want to say it's a who's who, but uh, there's just a ton of people uh, who, uh, who it's, and it's really invigorating to, to lock arm in arm for a cause such as uh, protecting and bringing about awareness to the dignity of life. It's not, it's more than a little fun, like you said. You guys make it a, a lot of fun. And uh, I want to encourage people to uh, go to the website and find out how you can be involved. Uh, you buy a table, folks, and, and bring friends, family, maybe somebody who is. Somebody who is maybe that one who says, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, take the life of a child, but I'm not going to choose and make that decision for somebody else. Or I'm not going to, uh, you know, tell a woman what to do with her body or, or tell anybody what to do. This is, a, this is not about telling people what to do. This is about uh, protecting the most inif- innocent of what God has created and uh, brought to life. And uh, th- this work is, is oftentimes is, a, you know, we started the conversation 
can be uh, gut wrenching, demoralizing, as you hear some of the stories of people who have been affected by abortion. But in the end, we know that God wins, but uh, we're supposed to remain engaged in the battle. So join Maggie, join Iowa Catholic Radio, join us at the um, at, at the uh, gala coming up. Learn more at PulseLifeAdvocates.org. Did I get that right? PulseForLife.org. PulseForLife.org. Thank you for correcting me. Maggie, thanks for making time for us this morning. Thanks for uh, uh, being a fellow worker in the vineyard, and we'll uh, talk to you again soon. Thanks so much. Appreciate you. God bless. Aaron, have you ever uh, attended the, the Pulse Life uh, event? You know, I'd like to say that I have, but I have not yet. Perfect. But I have heard from people who have gone. Well, um, I, can, I can tell you, Iowa Catholic Radio has a table, <laughs> and uh, if you don't get another invitation, uh, you, you'll be you'll be I'll joining a, us. I'll I'm have sure. a spot yeah. for sure. You can even bring your husband along. It, it, <laughs> nice. It's uh, well because we wouldn't want you to make financial decisions on your own. And, oh, that's uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> and it is an opportunity to support the, their great work. Of course, they're located just across the street from the station. And uh, you know, I was going to mention that uh, uh, just like Iowa Catholic Radio, the, the work that we do is is often it's helped guided through a, through a board that is active and engaged and also equally as passionate about the work that each one of us does. Uh, the lovely assistant that uh, that Maggie has when I pop in un- unexpectedly in the office always greets me with a smile. And uh, again, it's just great to be a fellow workers in the vineyard doing Doing the uh, what we hope is the Lord's work and following His will in teaching, defending, and evangelizing. And I did notice the 2025 March for Life registration is already open, and that's where you see again the youth with the pro-life generation signs and see that um, support coming from our high schoolers and our teens, and and they have a different understanding perhaps than than before being uh, taught about it and taught about our faith. So. Um, That's exciting to see. Listen to the Catholic Morning Show weekday mornings at 7 on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network, iowacatholicradio.com, or the Iowa Catholic Radio app.